I think I am live. <clears throat> I'm reading out of Joan Grant's book, Winged Pharaoh. This is Joan Grant. It was published in 1937 and it is a book of her own far memory. It was her first far memory book. Uh, she was born in 1907. And I am now in the third part of this book, which plays in the ancient Egypt in the time before the flood and before Babylon. We are here at chapter eight, the dweller in the corn. She's having the life of a young woman here. Her name is Sakita and she has a brother called Nea and Nea is now Pharaoh as their father passed away. One day I walked along the path through the cultivation and went among the corn, gathering scarlet poppies, the flower of warriors, to weave about the pillars and the temple, for it was the anniversary of my father's great victory. The sun was hot and I had walked far, and being tired I lay down in the shade of the growing corn and went to sleep. I find myself in a great forest, and the smooth trunks of the trees soared above me to the sky. I walked onwards through the growing colonnades, and I saw an animal which was as large as a lion but with a semblance of a field mouse. We could talk together, for I knew its thoughts. I asked it what it was called, and it told me who it, the dweller in the corn. Then I knew that I'd left my body, and that that for the f that the forest through which I walked was the cornfield in which I had gone to sleep. I put out my hand and touched the mouse, and the mouse suffered me to caress her as though she were my favourite horse. Her eyes were larger than the gazelles, and her whiskers were like rods of silver. Then I asked her where she lived, and the mouse led me up the smooth pillar of a corn stalk and stalk and showed me her nest. I stood beside her in the soft and rounded warmth which swayed with the ripple of a passing wind, and the mouse told me of the danger shadow of the fields, how a brother might be still in fear when death fell from the sky, and she warned me to keep in the shelter and not to cross an open space till it was dark. Then I left the mouse and went on my way, and above me the wind curved out the silken sails of scarlet petals. And then before me I saw a grassy, grassy wall, and I looked over it and I saw it was a nest with three great eggs. Suddenly the air about me was stirred by wings and the mother quail had come back to her nest. She seemed not to see me, nor to feed my hand, nor to feel my hand smoothing the feathers of her head. I knew she was listening for the tapping chicks to start breaking their way out of the eggs, for she sat long upon them and yearned to see their hungry mouths open in greeting when she brought them food. When I awoke, I pondered on my dream. Why do we not remember that there is only size when we think in terms of earthly form? Zeb, who would rather cut off his right hand than injure Natty, thinks nothing of seeing a hawk swoop on a mouse. A moth is worthily the work of tar as a swift horse. To think that size relates to godliness is as, is as though one listened to a man for his stature and not for his words. Tall buildings are not more lovely than a flower, nor twenty harps sweeter than a singing bird. We should think of all things as though they were as ourselves, for once we shared their life in our first journey from the hands of the tar. That was the end of chapter 8. Have a lovely Saturday.